Emotional Resilience 101. Practical tips to feel happier and less stressed. Emotional Resilience 101 is the ultimate guide to feel happier, overcome depression, manage stress, and more. Stick with me for all five video lessons to achieve astonishing results with minimal effort. Lesson one, the chemistry of emotions and the stress response. Welcome to Emotional Resilience 101. My name is Linda Bjork, and I'm an author, podcast host, and the founder of Hope for Healing Nonprofit. In this video series, I'll be sharing practical tips to feel happier and less stressed. What is emotional resilience? We don't always have control over what happens in our lives, but we do have control over how we respond. Do we bounce back or do we break? Emotional resilience is the ability to adapt to stressful situations. Emotionally resilient people are able to roll with the punches. That means that whatever happens, we're going to be okay, even if we don't know what okay looks like. Being emotionally resilient improves the quality of our lives. It reduces anxiety, worry, and stress, and increases confidence and inner peace. In order to become more emotionally resilient, we need to understand some of the natural processes of the body so that we can work in harmony with those processes and have greater success. The first thing we need to understand is that emotions are chemical. There is a physiological reason why we feel the way we do. Our brains have a reward center, and when it is flooded by feel-good chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins, we feel happy. We also have stress chemicals, cortisol and adrenaline. These make us feel stressed, and it also causes physiological changes in our bodies, and I'll explain more about that in a little while. Our mental, emotional, and physical health and well-being are all interconnected. For example, our body chemistry affects our emotions. Our emotions affect our thoughts, words, and actions. And our thoughts, words, and actions affect our body chemistry. To feel better, we want to decrease stress chemicals and increase feel-good chemicals by changing what we do, say, and think. It is easier to control what we do than it is to control what we think. For example, it's nearly impossible to just think ourselves out of depression, and yet we are not helpless. There are so many things that we can do that change the chemistry in our bodies, and that makes us feel better. Our actions are our best point of power. In the following videos, I'll be sharing some specific actions to change the chemistry in the body. And there are additional tips at the Hope for Healing website at hopeforhealingfoundation.org. We also need to understand what the stress response is and how it affects our body and our health. The stress response is the body's survival mechanism. It is designed to help keep us safe, and it's activated when we feel stressed, worried, fearful, or anxious. When we're stressed or scared, it triggers our bodies to produce cortisol and adrenaline. These chemicals activate the fight or flight system throughout the body. It acts sort of like a turbo boost function to give the extra energy we need to handle the emergency at hand, like running away from a bear, for example. It gets this extra energy by diverting energy away from other systems, like your digestive system, immune system, reproductive system, and so on. When the danger is over, the body should return to the normal rest and digest system, and energy is redirected back to the digestive system, immune system, and so on. The stress response also pulls blood and energy away from the prefrontal cortex area of the brain toward the back of the brain that we sometimes call the lizard brain. 
The prefrontal cortex is where our conscious thought and decision-making take place, and the lizard brain is mainly concerned with survival. If you're being chased by a bear, it's not time to analyze the situation, it's time to act. However, for everyday living, we really need the prefrontal cortex to be in charge. These natural processes of our autonomic nervous system are designed to keep us alive and safe. However, problems arise when we are chronically stressed and we keep our body stuck in the fight or flight mode. We cannot function well when our digestive system, immune system, and other necessary systems aren't working properly. In fact, according to the CDC, over 90% of our health problems are related to stress. Furthermore, our autonomic nervous system cannot tell the difference between the physical danger of being chased by a bear or being stressed about our kids, our work, our finances, our relationships, and so on. So it's very easy to trigger that fight or flight mode and stay there. So the opposite of the stress response is called the relaxation response. The relaxation response signals the body to return to the rest and digest or parasympathetic dominant state. The stress response, relaxation response, and cortisol levels are affected by what we do, say, and think. That means that we can do something about it. To feel better, we decrease stress chemicals and increase feel-good chemicals by changing what we do, say, and think. And remember, it is easier to control what we do than it is to control what we think. It's pretty hard to just choose to stop worrying and choose to feel peaceful. So once again, our actions are our greatest point of personal power. I'm going to share a couple ways to activate the relaxation response. When we're startled or frightened, a natural response is to gasp. A gasp is a quick intake of breath. You are instinctively taking in extra oxygen, so you'll be ready to run away from that bear. You're also triggering the stress response. To activate the relaxation response, we want to do the opposite. Instead of inhaling quickly, we want to exhale slowly. This tells the body that it's safe. It can take between 60 and 120 seconds to make that switch from fight or flight back to rest and digest. So exhaling slowly just once might not be sufficient. But if we continue to breathe slowly for one to two minutes, our bodies can make the transition back to that parasympathetic dominant or rest and digest state. Here are some more tips to help us be able to concentrate on our breathing. Put one hand over your chest and one hand over your belly. When you breathe, notice which hand is moving. If the hand over your chest is moving, that is shallow breathing and it doesn't fully oxygenate the blood. We want the hand over our belly to move and the hand over our chest should pretty much hold still. This is called deep breathing, or belly breathing, or even diaphragmatic breathing. This kind of breathing helps activate the relaxation response. One method to help us concentrate on our breathing is called box breathing. To do box breathing, we inhale slowly for a count of four, then hold our breath for a count of four. Then exhale slowly for a count of four, and then hold our breath for a count of four. So it makes sort of a repeating box pattern. Then continue this pattern for one to two minutes. We can also activate the relaxation response by filling ourselves with positive feel-good chemicals. And in the next video, I'll be sharing several ways to do that.